Morning, church. How are we doing this morning? We're going to start our song service off by singing number 185. 185, Jesus is all the world to me. Okay, number 577, 577, In the Heart of Jesus.
Good morning. Nice to see you guys here. And it's really neat to see visitors too. So I'm not going to just point people out, but it's really nice to have visitors here. Um, we're thankful. Um, I always get phone calls during the week, sometimes on Sabbath saying, hey, are you guys open? We want to we worship together. I love it. I love it because then I am in good expectation, right? So Welcome to you all. Welcome to those of you that are online as well, because we have many of you online as well, and we're so thankful to have you here today. Wanted to um, mention a couple of things. Summit Christian Academy, it's that time of the year where we must enroll if you want to be a student at Summit Christian Academy. So in your emails, those of you that are interested, please double check your emails uh, and take a look at that. One thing, an addendum or, or something to write along with that announcement is this. I was blown away this week when Kenneth sent me the email to send out to ask people for help financially for one scholastic year for one of the children abroad. This child that happens to be in Peru. Um, I'm not going to advertise the difference in cost between tuition of Peru and the United States, different realities, not the point. But I was so surprised that I had multiple people saying, I will pay the full ride. Ten months, it's on me. And I'm like, well, hang on, who do I, who do I allow to receive a blessing here for blessing others, right? It's not my position, so I'm reaching back to everyone that said, hey, I want to contribute, and I'm saying, hey, can you take like two months as opposed to six or ten or, right? Wow. So here's the thing. I've noticed that there's some people here that really do appreciate and want to sponsor children to have Adventist Christian education, right? And that, that's really exciting because I, I didn't know how you guys felt until I sent that email. Okay, I'm glad I did. I'm glad Ken asked. Um, that's awesome. I mean, I, I'm, thank you guys. It shows, shows how faithful stewards that this, this church really is. Um, and that just really excites me. So the idea is this. Um, perhaps those of you that maybe are interested, because some of you said, hey, I think might have not maybe misunderstood me or something, and said, hey, can I just give straight to Summit Christian Academy? So that was... One is for the student overseas, but there is a need. I mean, we have children that come to this church that aren't there. Now, I don't know why. I haven't twisted anybody's arm to see why people aren't in you know, Summit Christian Academy. But the idea is sometimes it might be because, man, I could af almost afford it, but I can't. It's tough, right? So perhaps once we meet the goals that we've already met already, maybe the extra funds can go towards a West Jordan scholarship fund to really allow our children here who desire to go to Summit Christian Academy, maybe we can help that way, all right? Now, this is just a, 
you know, nothing official, but man, I, I just had to share that. I had to share that. And maybe that's where we can go forward. We can kind of shift directions now that one need has been met. Maybe there's other needs that we don't know about. Right? All right, so awesome, awesome. I'm glad that you guys are excited. I'm getting a lot of amens. Maybe I'm getting amens from home, but I can't tell, right? Because, <laughs> you know, there's a barrier between us right now. At least from you to, or for you, for you to me, yes. Okay, very good. All right, so... Um, the other thing that, that has been on my heart here lately is, yes, we've got the church officers for 2021. Yes, I understand we have new off, you know, some new officers, some you know, veteran officers. That's great. But we still have positions that need to be filled. And, and remember, we don't send any spiritual you know, muscle towards you because you know, a lot of churches have nominating committee. Okay, we don't, and we would like to stay that way. We'd like it to be purely empowered by the Spirit where you go, I want to serve in this area. Please let me serve in this area. It's music to any of our ears. But we still have areas such as deacons, not enough deacons. God bless the ones that we have, we just don't have enough, right? We can do more when we have a, a stronger workforce. So I'm asking those of you that feel comfortable in that position, well, I don't know, Pastor, I don't know what, what a deacon does, reach out. I'd be happy to send you the list, <laughs> okay? Any other position that you think could bless this church and the community, awesome. Come talk to us. I promise I, I, I'm always smiling when somebody says, Pastor, I want to help. <laughs> I never, never frown. It's always really nice when people come and say, I want to help. So keep that in mind. Those of you that are youth, right, in, in our Friday night Vespers program is from 7 to 8.30. And again, that has been tailor-made for those of you that are 13 to 25, okay? However, we had a request by somebody that's no longer a youth because they're 39 and in another several decades uh, when you add them together. They said, oh, you know what, as opposed to some of our Friday night Vespers, do you think sometimes we can zoom in on these young guys and see what they're doing? And I said, yeah, we could do that. Cool. So that's going to happen. Perhaps next Friday we're going to do that. Uh, barring there's no technical difficulties, we'll do that. Um, but it's exciting. That's happening right now. So if you have you know, people in your household of that age, bring them over. Bring them over. You know, we try to end right at 8.30 so you're not tired and you can't come here listen to me do announcements on time. Okay. All right, very good. Guys, um, so just remember, and enro open enrollment for some Christian Academy. Keep that in mind as you, uh, as you plan this year's Scholastic. By the way, God has blessed Summit Christian Academy so much. We were brave and stayed open. I know some people think that we're irresponsible by doing that, but that's, that's okay. Everybody gets a choice. But we stayed open, guys, and God protected this school in a major way. Did COVID come around us? Yeah, absolutely. But we caught it. We, people you know, got quarantined, and then they came back to class. We offered online for those that thought had COVID. Um, I don't think we actually had one child that had a legitimate case of COVID. So what a blessing, and um, it just goes to show you that where there's a will, there's a way. God is good. He protects. And I, I'm not, you know, very careful when we say that, by the way. Please, that's something that's been on my heart, too. When we say God has protected us, that means that everybody that got COVID isn't protected. Yeah, that's not the message that we're trying to send out, right? But I believe where there's been a knee-jerk reaction and, and the whole country's closed schools, and that has caused many other problems, we were able to stay open, and it's been a blessing. It goes to show you that if we do it right, it can be done. And I'm so proud of our teachers, staff, volunteers, because Pam is retired, but she's Eternal Summit Christian Academy. Uh, you know, she's a veteran. So she's been there. We've been doing some worship stuff together, but Pam's always there. Um, and I appreciate everybody that contributes. So anyway, keep them in prayer as well, because guess what? This is still a reality for us, right? And we want to make sure that, that that's the case. Um, so as far as that, Watch out for your bulletin. There's going to be some announcements there. You want to keep uh, and mark your calendars, all right? Other than that, again, super happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. 
awesome that we have our guests here and our visitors and we love love you guys and always come back uh, if you're in the area and if you're um, a guest that could become a member there's a form that you can fill out too we always invite people to become members here amen for those of you that I've given that form to and have not done it yet, see, it's always a smile. We want you. We would love to have you. All right. Blessing to you guys. Okay, let's stand as we sing our opening hymn number 186. Hymn number 186, I Found a Friend. a friend he loved me ere I knew him he drew me with the cords of love and thus he bound me to him and round my heart still closely twined those ties which not can sever for I am his and he is mine forever a friend he bled he died to save me and not alone the gift of life but his own self he gave me not that I have my own I call I hold it for the giver my heart my strength my life my all are his and his forever. I found a friend, oh such a friend, all power to him is given to guard me on my upward course and bring me safe to heaven. The eternal glories gleam afar to nerve my faint endeavor so now to watch to work to war and then to rest forever i found a friend oh such a friend so kind and true and tender so wise a counselor and guide so From him who loveth me so well, what power my soul can sever? Shall life or death or earth or hell know I am his forever? You may be seated. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. It's, it's been a while since I've been up here and seen so many beautiful faces. Welcome to the West Jordan Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are thrilled that you chose to worship with us today. Um, it is now time for us to worship the Lord in prayer. As we do at West Jordan, we open up our hymnals to hymn number 671. For those of you who are able to kneel with me, please do so. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to thank you for a beautiful Sabbath day. 
I want to thank you for setting aside a day for us, a day in which we can commune with you fully, a day in which we can fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Lord, we thank you for just your many blessings. And if we recounted them all, Lord, we'd be here all day and then some, because you're just so good to us. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you for, as Pastor Adriano was talking about, Summit Academy and, and no, no cases of COVID. Lord, please continue to set a hedge there of angels, Lord, to protect them and, and Lord, to train our young people up in the way that they should go. Father, we just want to invite your presence here. We thank you for all of our, our visitors who are here today worshiping, Lord. I pray that... Jordan shows Jesus to our visitors and to our neighbors and to our friends. And Lord, that we would rightly represent you. We're in a, in a dark world, and, and we have light because we know Jesus. Lord, we need to share that, whether it be through talking, whether it just be through the way in which we conduct ourselves. Lord, let it be that we glorify you and that Lord, we just we want you to come soon. But in order to do that, Lord, we each have to surrender our hearts fully to you. Lord, we know that you want to come, but you're not willing that any should perish. Lord, let it be that we help to hasten your coming. Father, pour out your spirit upon us. We need you. We need the Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to lift up our brother Gary today. But just ask that you would bless him with clarity of thought as he brings the words that you've had him prepare for us, Lord, that you would give us clarity of, of mind, give us ears to hear and to understand and to put into practice what we learned from, from the message today. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. Please fill this place with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer, O Lord, incline thine ear to us, and grant us thy peace. Good morning. How are you today? Good. I have an exciting story for you. Everybody wants to hear this story. Or do you? Okay. How many have gone on vacation? Vacation? Where have you gone? Alex? Mountains? I love the mountains. Missouri? Skiing? Good. Yellowstone. There's a lot of places to go on vacation, huh? There's a lot of places to go on vacation, isn't there? And do you know that there's a lot of work involved in getting ready for a vacation? Yeah. There's all kinds of papers and getting reservations and finding out if there's room for all the family, and if they can travel, and then getting a car, or an airplane ticket, or a bus ticket, or just getting gas for our car. There's a lot of stuff, isn't there, involved in getting ready for a vacation. And when we get on vacation, we don't want to go home, do we? No, oh, nobody wants to go back home. It's so boring back home. 
except if you're tired, then sometimes it's nice to get back home, isn't it? That's a good thing you didn't cry when you went to Yellowstone, huh? Okay. Do you know what do we usually? Do you, what do we usually have to pack? There's a bag. What's it called? Airy. A suitcase. What do you put in your suitcase? Clothes. Toothbrush is important, Alex. Yeah. And a swimsuit and maybe some flip-flops if you're going to the beach or a coat if you're going in the mountains. There's lots of stuff to put in our suitcase, huh? There's got yeah, there's there's geysers there, huh? But do you know what? Okay. Do you know what? There is a big vacation coming up. It's coming soon. No man, no man knoweth the date or the time but God. What do you think? Where do you think we're going on this big vacation? Yes. Heaven. heaven. <gasps> Won't that be so exciting to go to heaven? And you know. And won't that be so exciting to go to heaven and see Jesus? And you know what else? We're not gonna have to go home. Once we get to heaven, it's going to last forever. And we're going to be able to be at the end. Do you think there's going to be a lot of stuff to do in heaven? Yeah. yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff to do in heaven. Yeah. That's right. It's going to be so fun, huh? Will there be tears and crying and sadness in heaven? No. Jesus has promised us there are many mansions. What are mansions? Yes, Harry. Fancy rooms and houses, huh? In my father's house, and I go to prepare a place. Do you think Jesus is going, getting ready for us right now? He is, and he's preparing a place for us, and where he is, he says we are going to be there too. Do you believe Jesus' promises? Yeah. <gasps> of course we believe Jesus' promises. And do you know what else? When we're getting ready for our vacation and we've got all these papers all lined up, Jesus has been sending us messages. Have you been seeing on the news? It doesn't look too good now, does it? Do you think Jesus? He wants to take a turn next, but we'll see, okay? Do you know that Jesus has been sending us messages? And we are seeing the world getting worse and worse. Do you think our big vacation and holiday with Jesus is coming up fast? Yeah. I think so. I think so, just like preparing for, yes, he will, that's right, and do you know what else, as we're preparing to go to heaven, can I take my swimsuit and flip-flops with me, no, I take what's in my heart, what love Jesus has given me, and the Bible words, isn't that what we need to prepare for, that's how we prepare to go to heaven with Jesus, isn't it, we need to Read our Bibles. That's right. I'm going to tell you a story about when I was a little girl. You guys like these silly stories, don't you? When I was a little girl, my mother didn't travel very much. We didn't go any place. She was a single mother with three little kids. So we stayed home a lot, and we're like, okay. And we stayed home a lot. My name is Robin. And we stayed home. A my mommy's name was Sharon. And, you know, we stayed home a lot. And when we would go visit my grandparents or my cousins, how many of you like to go visit your cousins? Oh, yes, we like to go visit cousins. And she never told us, okay, it's time to go home, because what do you think would have happened? What? No, we don't want to go home. So she always said, you know, it's time for us to go now. Well, when I was little, I thought, well, if it's time for us to go, that means we're going somewhere else. It'll be so fun. And we'd ask her when we got in the car, Mom, where are we going? Where are we going next? We were so excited. And she'd say, we're going to 4484 Trinity Avenue. <gasps> Yay! And then we started getting closer. And I'm looking around. This, <gasps> that's my address of my home. 
she got to fool us for a little while until we learned our address. Then she couldn't do it anymore, huh? And that was, that was a good story about heaven. And you remember that Jesus is, can't wait to come and get you, okay? Thank you so much. Good morning. Yes, happy Sabbath. 
It's so good to see everyone here this morning. Well, thank you, Paul. Before I get started, let's have prayer. Father God, we thank you for your great grace, for your presence. Anoint our hearts. May the glory always go to you of what we are and what we are becoming through you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is not working. We had another one. Did I get the one that doesn't work? (laughs) <laughs> we had two of them. <laughs> Several weeks ago, no, it's not working. Several weeks ago, I heard a message presented by a favorite speaker. This message was on purpose. Here we are. But it's not it's not giving me my title. In this existence here, what is the meaning of purpose? What is the purpose of meaning? What is my purpose? What is your purpose? What's this all mean? And this message made me think, here it is, in this existence here, I'll repeat it, what is the meaning of purpose? What is the purpose of meaning? What is my purpose? What is your purpose here? Why am I still alive? This message I'm sharing with you this morning has been in development for for over 50 years. And I finally come to the place that I know where purpose is defined. I didn't really have a defined purpose. Life is, is life a series of roles? played over the years. But this message is a culmination of those many roles I have had defining purpose. To all I would ask here, What is your purpose? Oh, thank you. What is your purpose? Why am I here? What am I living for? This has been a question that has been asked since the beginning of time. What is the meaning of my life? What is the meaning of your life? Can I make decisions that will impact, change, or, or, or make my purpose different? As I look back on the past, and, and I think of my own experience, what have we accomplished or not accomplished? 
It impacts who we are now. And our characters now and what we are and do now impacts our futures. This seems kind of simple, but when you stop and think about it, that's it. What, who I was yesterday, the character I had yesterday, impacts what we are today. The Apostle Paul This, this doesn't... Oh, there it is. Okay. Not as although... And, and we look at back. We, I look back at life and I say, oh, if I'd have done this or if I'd have done that or could have, would have, should have. But Paul writes in Philippians 3, 2, 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count myself to, to my brethren, I count not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward. I press forward. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press forward to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Wow. Why do I get up in the morning? Purpose guides life decisions. And whether you have a defined purpose or not, you're, you're going to make decisions in your life that influences your behavior, shapes your goals, provides focus. For some people, purpose is tied to vocation or what it is that you do. Meaningful, satisfying work. But does life consi consist of a series of random, ragtag assortments of unrelated events strung together by random circumstances or vicissitudes? What is the meaning? Are we victims of fates? Do we live out our allotted time sometimes in happiness, sometimes in sorrow, and then pass on? And the activities of life and the memories of us cherished by loved ones become only memories. I think of someone in my past who I met in Las Vegas who had, this man had such an influence on who I am today. And that influence this man had on me live, has lived on from the time I met him. He was the pastor that I met in Las Vegas. Fifty years ago, and I was, I was not living, I was living in open sin. And I expected him to, tell, to condemn me and tell me all the bad things I was going to happen, that, was, that I was, and that, 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 I, that I was going to just burn and burn and burn. I was so surprised. when he treated me with love and acceptance and forgiveness. 
I think when I think of this man, this is not working again. <laughs> I'll read it to you. Revelation 14, 13. There it is. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I'm here because of God working through this man in my life. His works do indeed follow him. He's resting in Christ. In my paper Bible, I have a little cutout of his obituary. Write by this text. Back to purpose. Purpose. Others, some say our purpose is to love others, to become the best versions of ourselves or to follow God's will. Still others say there is no purpose to life at all. I believe that our lives do have a purpose and that the clues around us are in plain view. Put simply, your purpose in life is to live the life of a hero. Talked to a lady this week. She takes care of her mother. Her mother's in hospice. Her selflessness to care for her mother. An unsung hero. And there is an ultimate hero. Who could it be? <laughs> Who could that ultimate hero be? I think of the song. Searching for an answer. That was at the top of the popular song charts in 1974. That's 40, 46 years ago. Many of you were alive 46 years ago. The song is entitled, Searching for an Answer. The words go something like, go, the words go like this. As my life goes on, I believe somehow something's changed, something deep inside. Changing me. I've been searching so long, searching for an answer, searching so long to find an answer. Now I know that my life has meaning. Searching for an answer. To that question, changing me. And the song says, when I see myself as I really am, I come to the personal, to the painful realization that I desperately need a Savior. And hallelujah, he is, he is waiting to welcome you and I and give us his beautiful character. And as we get to know him, more and more we desire the infinite beauty of his character. And young people here, all of us, define your purpose right now. 
And I have some suggestions what that can be. Well, some say, live your life to the fullest. Well, what, what, what's that look like? Well, some say, well, life, living life is, is, is simply to give life a meaning. Well, what? I think of this text. Whoops. I go too far. I didn't, I didn't put it in my, on the, on the PowerPoint. I, 1 Corinthians 13, 12, if you have your Bibles. For now we see through a glass darkly. We don't see the end from the beginning. But now I know in part, but then shall I know even also I am known. The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate purpose of life. Some say, well, purpose, the purpose of life is survival. Survival, is that all? How about to excel in a profession? To be wealthy. I want to be wealthy. Yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little old, too old to, to get to accomplish that fact. To possess political power. To be a leader in business and government. To be accomplished and famous in entertainment. To be a religious leader, pastor, elder, ministry leader. To be a successful parent. To have a loving spouse. To be religious, to be a celebrity. To excel as a, an electrician, plumber, truck driver, carpenter, concrete worker, and many more. These are all roles. To be happy every day, but how do we accomplish that? Everyone has tragedy in their lives, suffering and sorrow in their life experience. Anybody that does not are young children. Some suffer in a much greater degree than others. I think of Job. who suffered terribly. I've just finished a book entitled Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. Mr. Frankel was born in 1905 and died in 1997, 92 years old. In 1939, he was a doctor, the head of a department in a Jew Jewish hospital in Vienna. And we know what was happening in history at that time. Hitler was rising to power. The hospital was closed by the Nazis. Mr. Frankel rely, realized that he must leave Vienna immediately. Although he and his wife were eligible for an immigration visa to the United States, he let the visa expire because he wanted to take care of his aging parents. He stayed in Vienna understanding what the consequences of that would be. The selflessness. Dr. Frankel, his wife and his parents were deported from Austria and taken to Germany 
and incarcerated in a German concentration camp in 1942. Viktor Frankl spent the next three years at Oswatz and Dachau and Thera Saintat. He cared for his parents in the concentration camp. Both of his parents died in the concentration camps and unknown to Dr. Frankel, Victor, his beloved wife Tilly died of starvation in the camps. Victims of hatred of a certain group of people. What does God say about this? Got this out of sequence here somehow. Well, I missed it. Turn to your book, turn with me in your Bibles to Acts 17, verses 24, 25, 26, and 27. Verse 24 God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and, heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither, neither is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, breath, and all things. And hath made, verse 26, and hath made of one blood all nations of men. How many? Not some. All. Have made of one blation, one blood all nations of men for to dwell on, on the face of the earth and determine the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. If you remember your history, Hitler conver convinced Germany that all of their problems were the fault of the Jews. We know the rest of the story. The concentration camps were built and the gas chambers to exterminate a class of people. Acts 17, 26, I repeat it. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. All of us. Victor Frankl endured the hardships, and, and that's a weak word, of the concentration camps. When the Americans and the Allies freed the camp, concentration camps, here is a picture of what the Americans found. Notice their legs. You'll notice, on, on, not faces of despair, but notice how thin they are. Not only did Viktor Frankl survive, but how did these men also survive? Here's a brief summary of life in the concentration camps. The barracks were incredibly, incredibly crowded. In Birkenau, the barracks that housed the prisoners were 1,364 square feet and and with 700 prisoners. Four people 
That's, that's two feet, that's two square feet per person. Four people slept on straw mattresses, an area of 53 square feet. Four twin beds put together are 72 square feet. There were no toilet facilities, no showers. People went for years without a shower that survived. No heating and ventilation in many of the buildings. Here's a picture of one of the buildings at Bacau. Death camp. There were little vents to ventilate the building. And the windows were permanently closed. Prisoners arrived at the camp were issued a uniform. And that was it. For shoes, they were issued the wooden shoes, Dutch clogs, with leather stripes up above, wrappers. Prisoners in the camps received three meals daily, in the morning, in, at midday, and in the evening. Each morning, they received a half of liter or quart of black coffee or brew, that's it. They weren't sweetened. The midday meal consisted of a portion of soup that tasted nasty. And this was about three quarters, three fourths of a liter or a cup, about 400 calories. There were just a few vegetables in the soup. And if you knew somebody in the kitchen, one of the prisoners in the kitchen, he might ladle the soup from the bottom for you so you could get some of the ingredients. For supper, the prisoners were given 25 grams of sausage or margarine, a spoonful of jam or cheese. They lived on 13 to 1400 calories a day. As a result, many de developed chronic exhaustion. Their work days consisted of 11 hours. They got up at four o'clock in the morning. They, they had, were marched out to formation in the morning, and if the camp guards were in a bad mood, they were beat as they were marched. This was daily. If an SS guard, secret service, Nazi secret service guard got it, got it in for you, and they didn't like the looks of you, they'd just shoot you right there in the spot. No consequences. It was hopeless. Sometimes in their desperate need for food, they would go to the garbage cans and eat the rotting, rotting garbage and peelings and then have continual dysentery. Incredible. Dr. Frankel not only lived he had a manuscript for a book that he was writing. And that manuscript was taken away from him and destroyed. And he wanted to rewrite that book. And that was one of his desires to live, to continue. Many times, and they would go out on these work details, and it was hard labor. And if you kind of slowed down, you'd get, you'd get a beating. Or the butt of the rifle, or get shot. Take your choice.
Many times, the guards would tell a prisoner, they'd order a prisoner to go out to one of the perimeters. They'd shoot him. And then they'd go back in and they'd say, well, this such and such tried to escape. Nobody had a name. They all had numbers tattooed on their left, left hand. They tried to escape. And then the guard would be... The guard would be rewarded for shooting a prisoner that was supposedly trying to escape. A terrible circumstances. Many people in those camps, they called it give up itis. They would give up, not get up no matter how much the threats or the beatings, they'd lay there and die. Hopeless. You tried, Victor Frankl in his book says, you tried to remain in the middle of the people, of the group. You didn't want to get anybody's attention. Then there were times when they'd get everybody up in the morning and have a group of people go to the left and have a group of the prisoners go to the right. And the ones that went to the right were taken to the gas chambers and, and gassed. So, and somehow, by the grace of God, Dr. Frankel was lucky enough not to be in one of the groups that was chosen to go to the gas chambers. That 11-hour 11 day, 11 hour day finally concluded at 9 o'clock, and then they were back up at 4 o'clock in the morning. the severe beatings that the prisoners endured, a little infraction for maybe getting an extra piece of food. They were flogged in front of everybody else. But they were merciful. You, wouldn't, couldn't, you didn't have to be flogged. They, they had a limit of 20, of, of you got a flogging and you got a flogging 20, he got hit 25 times with a whip or a stick. And as I read this book, the first part of the book, I read this book and I, I thought to myself, how did, you how did you survive with this? How did some survive? Remember the picture I showed? And others didn't. Purpose. Purpose, those who survive. Dr. Frankel talks about how he would, he would think about and look forward to the time that he could be reunited with his wife, Tilly. His memories of her. He would sometimes just forget about what was around him and think about her. He thought about and he dreamed of seeing her again. He dreamed of continue his, continue his professional life as a psychiatrist. He dreamed and thought about how he, get, how he would get up and lecture on psychiatry. He had, he had a unique view of psychiatry. But he also did this. He lived to help others in the camp. And give them a reason in an absolutely hopeless situation for hope. 
Sometimes they would have to walk on going out and the work was hard labor, digging ditches and digging canals. Some of them, they didn't have any shoes anymore. Some of them, in a winter, their feet would be frozen. As I say, some just gave up. Some did committed an infraction, some little infraction, got themselves shot. Frankel writes, success like happiness cannot be pursued. It must ensue. You must have it already. It only does so as the intended side effects of one's dedication to a cause greater than oneself. or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person greater than himself. Who could that be? <laughs> wow. So to a cause, to a person greater than, than ourselves. Some live lives, they make mistake after make mistake. They, they live lives as they had an opportunity to live again. They make decision after decision that brings sorrow and heartbreak not only to themselves, but to those that love them. I was that person. The age of 29 or 30. I hated myself for what I was becoming. Mean and angry and hateful. He was there, remember the song? He was there all the time, waiting in line. I can remember one of my employers in Las Vegas, I told him, I've said this story before, but I, I love to tell it. I think of the song, I love to tell the story, which will be my theme in glory. I told, I told a Christian man, and I said, well, God, God is dead. God doesn't live. I can see knowing the Lord like I know him now. I can hear him saying, Gary, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I am what I am. First Corinthians fifteen ten, favorite Bible author. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Wow. What he's done for me, he'll do for you, much more even. Purpose. Purpose. The World Health Organization estimates that almost 800,000 people die in the world from suicide every year. That's one person every 40 
seconds it takes their life, their own life. What tragedies. What tragedies. Why do people give, take their own lives? They give up hope. They give up faith. They give up on love. They give up and say the future will be not be better than the present. It will be worse. They give themselves over to despair. The pain is too great. They cannot go on. Yet if they can find meaning in life, a purpose if you please, they will have a reason to have joy and to be optimistic. Many have come to that moment. I came to that moment over 25 years ago. I asked God, please take my life. I do not want to live anymore. I, I'm a miserable failure as a, a miserable failure as a church member, as a husband and a father. What was the purpose of, of it all? I remember I was so surprised that morning when I woke up. Prior to this, I had roles and my perception was that those roles as a husband, father, and church leader and my profession as an accountant were all successful and I indeed took pride in all those roles. I had opportunity to go to college, finish my college education. I finished, I graduated from accounting the age of 41, graduated cum laude in accounting from college at the age of 41, Weber State College, now a university. Pretty good, huh? Really? As I look back on this and now I ask myself, what, what was my defined purpose here? We, have, we all have roles, but what's our purpose? Is there a calling or choosing by a higher power? It was shortly after that that a friend asked me, he said, Gary, will you keep the accounting, will you keep the books? for my children's organization, sponsoring children. Pastor, Pastor just talked about sponsoring children, but this time it was in Bangladesh. And I said, well, sure, Dave. Then he started asking me, Gary, you need to come to Bangladesh to see these children and see what we're doing. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not a builder. Nobody wants to see me there. There's nobody there wants to see me. And Dave kept asking me all the time. I said, Dave, I don't want to, I don't like, I don't travel internationally. Finally, I said yes. And I found purpose. My first trip was in 1999. My last trip was in 2016. I made 11 trips in those years. Finally, starting to formulate a definite purpose. What purpose? What is our purpose here? Only Jesus can answer that question. Will you ask him to answer that question for you? Especially young people. What is your purpose? What do I want to do? 
We were created in the beginning to reflect the image and likeness of our Creator, our purpose. Oh, that's going backwards. I'm going to go this way. So Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, created he him. Men only. Is that what that says? Male and female created he them. And I served in Bangladesh. In some of the villages and some of the cultures there, women were considered third and fourth and fifth class citizens. So God created man in his own now. I'm going to repeat. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And yet, Adam and Eve lost that image and likeness. Satan told them that they could be like God and that they were... He said, well, you, you, you'll be like God's if you eat this fruit. Is that what, don't you want to be? They were already created in his, in his image. This is like the person that has, has a nice Cadillac SUV and all of a sudden desires, desires a Mercedes-Benz or a BMW. What? Text of the day. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. And this is from the Amplified Bible. I love this from the Amplified Bible. All has been heard. The end of the matter is fear God, revere and worship Him, Knowing that he is, knowing that he is. Remember what Job said? I know. I don't believe it. I don't think it. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Revere and worship him, knowing that is he is, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation. The object of God's providence the root of character. What is character? Character is the sum total of what you think, what you say, what you do, your disposition, your habits, all combine to make up character of who you are. There's a statement that comes to mind in Ministry of Healing. Our objective in life is self-development. That doesn't happen in my experience my efforts at self-development ended up in failure every time. The full original purpose of his creation. The object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness. Well, oh, but but I, I I want to be happy, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, space out on some substance. The meaninglessness of that kind of a life of a life of living only for the moment of self-gratification, gratification becomes empty, empty, empty.
the object of God's providence, the root of character. I'm, I'm emphasizing the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and con conditions under the sun, and the whole duty for every man. We include women in that also. <laughs> purpose, to possess his likeness, to, to possess his character, to understand the reflection of his character is the purpose of meaning, the meaning of purpose. And what I love about is that this is a dynamic process. Life is not, not boring. <laughs> I think of the song, Young at Heart, and life gets more exciting with each passing day, and love is either in your heart or on its way. You meet new people. Your love deepens for, the, for, the, for your family and for your friends and your appreciation of them. Root of character. Also, character is how we act when no one's looking. Boy, there's all kinds of questionable TV programs out there. Nobody's looking here. I, I, I'll turn that on. Look at that. But it is destructive. What we take in impacts us and affects us. How many here, I see here, I can put this, put this up. The world's Redeemer accepts men as they are with all their wants, imperfections, and weaknesses and he will not only can cleanse them from sin and grant them redemption through his blood, but will satisfy the heart longing of all who consent to wear his yoke, to bear his burden. It is his purpose. Whose purpose? It is his purpose to impart peace and rest to all who come to him for the bread of life. He requires us to perform only those duties that will lead our steps to heights of bliss to which the disobedient can never attain. And then this last statement. The true joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within the hope of glory. Now, how many have read Steps to Christ in the last six months? I have some, how many, how many would like to read Steps to Christ right now? How many don't have a copy of Steps to Christ and would like to have a copy? Raise your hands and I'm going to ask the deacons I've got some steps to Christ in the back to have, hand, that, hand those out. Anybody? There's one. There's two hands. I recommend reading this book. This is from Steps to Christ. The true joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within the hope of glory. SC standing for Steps to Christ, page 41. Read this book. Read this book at least once a year. Read it twice a year. Start in the middle. Go to the end. Start in the middle. Go to the front. Start in the back and read all the way to the front. As you read this book and, and, in, and adopt the changes in your own life, you will see something changing. Changing your life. Changing you. Last one, by looking constantly to Jesus with the eye of faith, 
we shall be strengthened. God will make the most precious revelations to his hungry and thirsting people. They will find that Christ is a personal Savior. As they feed upon his word, they find that it is spirit and life. The word destroys the natural earthly nature and imparts a new life in Christ Jesus. Wow. The Holy Spirit comes to the soul as a comforter by the transforming agency of his grace. The image of God is reproduced in the disciple. He becomes a new creature. Love takes the place of hatred and the heart receives the divine similitude. That is what it means to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is eating the bread that comes down from heaven. Hallelujah. This is from the same author, Desire of Ages. But every page of Steps to Christ, I open it and, and it invites you and I into a personal relationship and friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, and if we don't get the basics, if we don't get the basics, if we don't understand what our true purpose is, we'll miss the boat. Purpose. To reflect the image and likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ and his character. And uniquely as you and I, by his grace, can do. Does anybody here look exactly like anybody else? Raise your hand if you do. Purpose. One more text. Philippians 3, 8. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ec excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but manure, but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And this is the capstone, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. <laughs> Resurrecting this, this old, mean, hateful man of sin into a new life. <laughs> Purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. The true joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within the hope of glory. From that book, Steps to Christ. Why? So you and I can influence others with words of hope and courage. So that you and I, by our presence here, can make this world a better place. And that's from Steps to Christ. Purpose, to reflect his image and likeness and have his character and demonstrate what that looks like. Purpose, closing song. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, number 623, I will follow thee. 623, shall we stand?
tithes and offerings in the baskets in the back. Father, we just sang, I will follow thee, my Savior. Not because we're smart, but it's because of your grace. Thank you so much. Let us resolve and purpose to follow you, to follow you. Today, tomorrow, forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.